Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home. So at the start of this episode, we are going to be joining the two probes that we sent over to Hydrus in the last episode. So the first one that has arrived has been the Relay Network. Now, I've already put up a couple of Relay Networks in this series, so I want to try and get through this as quickly as possible because it is exactly the same as what I have done before, except rather than being around Fury or Road, no, we are at Hydrus instead. So Hydrus is now the second planet that I have actually visited in this planet pack, and it looks very cool. I haven't sent a lander on this transfer window. I do want to do a lander the next time that one opens up, though, because I've heard lots of great things about Hydrus. There are some fantastic sites to be seen, so I do really want to explore those. I was using MechJeb's Resonant Orbit Calculator for this, and it didn't appear to work. Maybe I'm using it wrong, but people in the comments did suggest it, and it didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, we are now on to the scanner, and we're just going to leave this in a polar inclination of Hydrus for a bit, just so we can get some lovely scans of the surface. Once again, this probe has absolutely everything on it. We can get every single scan that we could possibly desire with this spacecraft. I also noticed I had a lot of Delta V left after I had completed my scan. So what I decided to do was actually go over to Hydron, which is the moon of Hydrus. And then, well, we can scan the moon as well and we can kill two birds with one stone, I guess, with this one mission. I have actually got contracts to scan both Hydron and Hydrus, which I have since completed. But another contract that I did pick up for Hydron as well, because I noticed despite going over to Hydron, I still had probably enough Delta V to land. So I have picked up a Hydron lander. And we will be doing that once we've got a full scan of the surface. So we're going to come back to the Space Center and with those missions, well, with that one mission, we gained an awful lot of science. So what I've decided to do is go down the 300 science tech nodes and unlock absolutely everything. I think it makes it kind of more organized. There are some science techs, well, there are some techs that I do kind of want to rush. And there is one that I do rush later on in this episode, which is long term habitation. That way I can actually start really making our colony, our Jamestown. Jamestown on Armstrong a bit more self-sufficient. But here are some of the maps that I did actually get of Hydrus. I thought I'd show this just to see the beautiful visual maps that we've got of the surface. And I'm just, yeah, messing around with Scansat. Scansat is amazing for these. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. But we also do have ones of Hydron as well. So now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be focusing yet again on definitely not Jamestown. And this is going to be a storage module that we launch. So I am going to recap the live stream here because this is when this is straight after the live stream, basically, that I did this in the live stream. We launched a couple of missions over to Rock and Vasto, which are two planets really far out in the Tempest system. And we also sent down a nuclear reactor to Jamestown. Oops, there. <laughs> we didn't quite safely recover that booster. So we have now got nuclear power at Jamestown, which is going to be really nice. And I think later on, I haven't done it yet, but I might remove some of those batteries just to get rid of some of the part count of Jamestown, make it a bit cleaner. We don't need a ridiculous amount of batteries anymore now that we do have nuclear power. Anyway, we have made our way over to Armstrong and we, of course, just going to capture ourselves in a nice circular orbit before bringing these pieces down. So I have obviously <laughs> shown a lot of the construction of this base in the previous two episodes and I just kind of want to get through this as quickly as possible. Like I said in the last episode, I've shown you doing all of the rendezvousing maneuvers and docking maneuvers when I've been in low Armstrong orbit. So I thought I'd just get to the, the more exciting bits where we're actually bringing these pieces down and connecting them up. So we have brought down the first piece. This is now the second storage module that I'm bringing down. And basically all it is, is a massive container that is going to hold all of the supplies that we are going to need in the colony. Now that we have brought those two pieces down, this next section is going to be a workshop. And if I am correct, this should be a workshop that helps produce material kits. I might be wrong though, because since having, well, having tried to test it, it doesn't seem to be working. And that is a technology that I do need to rush. There is a module called the Tundra 
assembly plant that I don't have and I believe I need that to make some of the more advanced stuff from USI. Anyway, what we're doing now is we do have Joe Kerman and he is out and about basically disassembling all of these legs. The only reason why I needed those legs to begin with was to tether the base to the ground. It's something that USI does and it means that the base <laughs> doesn't sink into the surface of Armstrong, which well, some parts, <laughs> some things that I have landed have done that. However, the ISRU units that I do now have on the base also have that option. So what I thought I'd do is I'd remove all of the legs and a load of parts that I don't really need anymore. And then that way I can reduce the part count on this base. I want to reduce it as much as I possibly can because obviously... I'm going to be coming to this base a lot and it's going to be very painful if I'm getting about 10 frames per second, which is what I was getting when I came down this time. And you can see we have actually now lowered the entire base. This does lead to a little bit of a problem later on though, because one of the modules that I am going to be sending, this one, which is our first ISRU unit, well, our first drilling unit, and <laughs> I thought I'd keep that in because for some reason, our spacecraft that we sent our crew down decided to spontaneously combust and launch itself into the air. Well, not the air, into the void of space. I really don't know why that happened, and that does mean we are going to need to send a replacement spacecraft down. Luckily, there were no one on board, so we didn't lose any more Kerbals, which is obviously something that has been happening quite a lot in this series. Once again, we are going to get Joe Kerman out because, yeah, I need to remove these legs because otherwise we aren't going to be able to connect this piece. That is the problem that I was talking about not that long ago. Yes, it wouldn't fit, so we had to remove those legs, and then after having done that, we can just nicely attach the drilling unit to the base. And now the final piece of this launch is actually going to be an extra planetary launch pad. So we can build craft from here, which is going to be very exciting for the future. I have said I do eventually want to just launch everything from the surface of Armstrong, but that is going to take a while before we're able to do that. So <laughs> now we are going to be launching the replacement spacecraft for, well, the base because the other one decided to spontaneously blow up. And this is, of course, definitely not Starship. Well, DNS. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Starship. So this has now got a name and this is going to be Swift. And I do have two of these and they are, I think I called them Swift and Swallow. And once again, we are going to be coming to the Road Planetary Space Alliance multicam whilst we watch the booster being recovered. Now, I know someone in, the, well, a few people made comments saying that the screens here were a little bit too small. I haven't edited that yet. I am going to do that in the future. The reason why I haven't edited that yet is because I wanted to get this video out and I have been very busy doing the trailer for the next millennia as well. And I've just been very busy, so I haven't really had time to edit this screen yet, but I will be doing that hopefully for the next episode of Coming Home that does come out because I do want everyone to be able to see everything that is going on in both of these screens. There you go, we can see we have almost landed the booster, we have deployed our parachutes and we're just firing up our engines so we can safely touch down. Unfortunately, because I wanted a pretty camera shot, it didn't work quite as well as I would have hoped. But we did manage to get this spacecraft into orbit and now of course we are going to be burning our way over to Armstrong. So I have actually crewed this and the reason why I crewed this is because I wanted to see what it would be like if we had six crew members on Definitely Not Jamestown at once. And because, well, USI has a hab timer and a home timer, and I just wanted to see what kind of thing we'd be expecting with six people over here. There we go. We have brought down the Swift nice and gently to the surface of Armstrong. But yeah, I had an issue with bringing extra crew over. So Joe Kerman, as we can see here, has decided to become a tourist. And I don't know why that is. It may be because I was sending him off and out doing all of that deconstruction work, but this means we can't actually get him out on EVA, which is going to be a bit of a problem. But there, Joe Kerman has returned to duty. And because of that, I thought, actually, do I want to turn around and land and see if I can pick him up? So I have sent these three, Oliver Kerman, Bobby Kerman, and Sono Kerman. They are going to be going back home because... 
Yeah, the hub time thing was a bit of an issue. I didn't return for Joe though. And the reason why is, is I wasn't sure if I had enough Delta V to do another landing after using 40 meters per second of Delta V to actually take off. So we are gonna be sending another mission over to rescue Joe momentarily. And anyway, this is the first time that we have returned from Armstrong with a, with a DNS. And I obviously tested it in the last episode, but that was only in low road orbit. But what I did was I did actually get this into low road orbit before descending onto the surface of road. We had enough fuel in this thing to actually slow ourselves down. This was an issue though. I realized my parachutes weren't deploying and I was a little bit worried and I realized I hadn't actually deployed them. So <laughs> I went into action groups, quickly made an action group and literally 50 meters from the ground, we managed to slow ourselves down to five meters per second. <laughs> that was very, very worrying. With that being done, it is now time to send even more modules over to Definitely Not Jamestown. Now, I did say that we were gonna send over another mission to rescue Joe because he was a tourist and then he wasn't a tourist and he can't really make his mind up. But unfortunately, I forgot to record whilst I was doing that and I, yeah, no, I didn't get the footage. We did, however, manage to recover him safely and we did actually take everyone off Definitely Not Jamestown. And what I want to do is I want to build it up a little bit more before actually sending a crew down again. So we're gonna send a few other modules up. So this storage module is going to have another four of those kind of like warehouse modules. And it is also going to contain extra ISRU drills. Now, the reason why I needed more of those is because the ones that I put down on the module that I've already placed down, well, <laughs> unfortunately, they were too close to the ground. So because they were too close to the ground, the game didn't recognize them actually being on the surface. So we disassembled those and I've placed a couple, no, I think I've placed eight drills on these warehouses and they are a little bit higher up. So hopefully, they should actually connect nicely to the ground. We have made our way into orbit though. We are now burning our way over to Armstrong and you can kind of see it is basically just four of these warehouses yet again. So the warehouses, I did start talking a little bit about what they contain. They do also contain RCS propellant. Now the reason why that is, is I need RCS propellant for our Kerbals to actually use their EVA packs. I'm not sure if that's stock or if that's something added by something else. If it's, well, one of the mods that I have got, that was a bit of a bumpy landing, but there we go. Any minute now and we are, come on, get in there, get in there. There we go, we have docked with that. And you can see there are four drills on that module. Now we are bringing down the second one of these. That was, I was really pleased with how, how quickly I managed to dock that. That was basically from our deorbit. I managed to get that straight away. Didn't have to do any finagling or wiggling around with the module to actually get it into place. This one didn't go quite as well, but it, it wasn't too far off. I am getting a lot better at actually bringing these modules down now. I, th I suppose I've had quite a lot of practice. I mean, look at the base. It is really <laughs> starting to get quite large now. And uh, of course, because it is getting quite large, that is exactly why I want to remove as many redundant parts as we can, because <laughs> otherwise it's gonna get very, very painful coming over here. But there we go. We have now connected the last of the warehouse modules. And this thing, I, I'm really, really loving how this thing is turning out. I think it looks absolutely mega. But of course, once again, we are just gonna send the Sky Crane off to its ultimate doom. So <laughs> this is going to be, I swear, the final module that we send to Jamestown. Definitely not Jamestown in this episode. And I think we are gonna expand it further in future episodes, but we have done so much definitely not Jamestown in the past three episodes. I mean, it's kind of been the main focus. Now, I thought this was rather, <laughs> rather ludicrous considering the actual payload fairing for this was larger than the launch vehicle. We do have a lot of stuff in here. So this is going to be our colony module. And oops, once again, we had a bit of a rough booster landing. So yeah, this is going to be our colony module. And I am using a lot of the USI parts for this. Now, 
This is going to be incredibly difficult to actually touch down on the surface of Armstrong. I've got, well, I built it in the vehicle assembly building the way I wanted it. And to fit that into a payload fairing was going to be impossible unless I did a little bit of orbital construction. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing once we have reached a nice stable orbit of Armstrong. We are going to be splitting all of these parts apart and then we're going to be using the sky crane to actually assemble them in their correct way, correct way, correct orientation, how it should be. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what the correct terminology for that is. But yeah, no, we're going to assemble them in low Armstrong orbit. And then once that has been done, then we're going to take the completed thing down to the surface all in one go. That is going to be difficult because this all in all weighs about 50 tons. Now the largest module that I've sent down before weighs about 15 tons. So this thing is going to be incredibly heavy, but there you go. We can see we are splitting them all up now. And now we're gonna just control the sky crane and start picking up some of the other pieces. So yeah, what are the pieces that are going to be on this module? So we have we have a colonization module, which is going to help with hab times and home times for our Kerbals on the surface of Armstrong if we provide colony supplies. At least I think that's <laughs> I think that's how it works. We also have an agriculture mulch module, even mulchul. I suppose mulch is what the Kerbals do produce, but no, an agriculture module that should hopefully provide us with long-term supplies. It's not going to work for a while yet. I do need to place down some separate bases on the surface of Armstrong to really utilize that. And you see, we also have a medical bay. That is another one of the modules that should also help with homesick Kerbals, which will be really nice. Hopefully means we should be able to get Kerbals down for a lot longer. And then the final modules that we do have on here, which is one of those big circular USI ones. And now this module that I'm just picking up, it's just more habitation space. So the surface, well, definitely not Jamestown, can now actually hold quite a sizable number of Kerbals. I think if we were to place absolutely everyone that we could in here, I think we could place maybe or we could habitate habitate no that's not the right word we could I, I i'm really i'm really struggling for words here but no we could have probably around 30 kerbals on the surface of armstrong so this thing is absolutely massive definitely not jamestown has really grown in this episode massive expansion that's what we have been working on that is of course the title of this episode so i said this thing was really heavy and this sky crane it's the exact same size as the sky cranes that I have been using before. And you can see we only have about 200 meters per second of delta V to bring this down. Usually I'm playing with around 2000 meters per second of delta V. So <laughs> yeah, this thing, it was really hard to maneuver and it was really hard to maneuver on the surface as well. So this, I have cut out the vast majority of this just just for your sanity, basically. You don't, you don't really want to see me wobbling this around on the surface of Armstrong for what probably took around maybe half an hour to 40 minutes, considering as well my frames were really bad. I was yellow clocking the entire time. Yeah, this took a really long time to actually do. There we go. We have almost got it in place. And then it is just a little bit of a wiggle before connecting it up. And that is the massive expansion done. So now what we're going to be doing for the last bit of this episode is we are going to be working on a new crew transfer vehicle over to definitely not Jamestown. Now, I know I have only just designed definitely not Starship, but there is, well, it doesn't have any cargo capabilities. It can carry seven Kerbals, I think, and it can't carry any cargo. So now the DNJ is getting a little bit bigger and a little bit better. Well, it is going to start producing some materials. And one thing that I do want to produce that is going to be very useful if we ship that back to road will be exotic minerals and exotic, no, rare metals. Those two, if we recover them safely at road, well, we will get a huge amount of funding back. 
And I think that is probably what I'm going to go along with is a way of actually funding my future endeavors. I mean, we get loads of funds. We don't really have to worry about completing contracts anymore. I mean, I will still pick up contracts as and when I can, as and when I feel like they are fitting, but it would be really nice to have a way of basically exploiting Armstrong. We're going to go over, we are going to mine the hell out of that moon and we're going to take all of those lovely resources and send them back. And obviously, like I said, well, DNS wouldn't be able to actually take that stuff back. So we've got a much bigger spacecraft now. And in here we do have some, well, it's going to contain some supplies. It's going to contain some colony supplies as well. As I mentioned, we are going to need to ship those over to definitely not Jamestown for the foreseeable future. We can eventually create those using USI, but unfortunately, that is one of the furthest products down the supply chain in USI. <laughs> so it's going to be quite some time before we actually start making those for ourselves on the surface of Armstrong. We are going to have to basically bring those along rather than producing those ourselves. So. This is quite a large vehicle, and I thought rather than using a, well, solar panels and batteries to power this, I have been rather enjoying nuclear power at the moment, and I thought, what's, <laughs> what's better than sending our Kerbals on top of a nuclear reactor? So we do have a very small nuclear reactor in the cargo bay. I think it's a 0.625 meter one, so it's not big. But of course, <laughs> that is going to be incredibly safe. We're going to have to hope that we never, ever, ever crash one of these. And it provides more than enough power for this to actually, well, give us everything that we could ever want. I, I don't think, yeah, I think once that nuclear reactor starts, this thing will be powered for the entire duration of its mission. And this is it's completely reusable. So... Every time that we bring one of these back, well, we're not wasting any of these parts. It's basically exactly the same as definitely not Starship in that regard. But there we go. We've even placed it on the DNS booster. And now we are going to be testing it out. So I have decided to call this Chimera. I'm not entirely sure why Chimera was the name that sprung to mind. I thought there is some Greek mythological beast and it sounds really cool and this thing I, I, I'm quite pleased with how this thing turned out I, th I thought this looked rather rather spectacular so we are going to be sending this to Armstrong we're going to be sending this to definitely not Jamestown and then we're going to be returning it immediately now <laughs> rather than placing a crew in this and endangering their lives we are going to be doing this fully automated for the first time this doesn't have a crew on it at all I am a little bit fed up of <laughs> the amount of Kerbals that have lost their lives in, well, for the name of the Rogue Planetary Space Alliance. So we are going to be testing things a bit more thoroughly from now on. There we go, the booster. We unfortunately didn't manage to recover that because it fell over and broke, which is a bit of a shame because those boosters are incredibly expensive. But anyway, we are going to be making our way into orbit with the Chimera test number one now. And of course, we are going to be sending this straight over to Armstrong. So I think this actually uses the same engine as definitely not Starship did, which is a little bit funny because this thing weighs a lot more than definitely not Starship. So it's kind of just, well, that engine is a little bit overpowered for that craft. And we are over at Armstrong. We are actually able to perform our descent burn to meet up with DNJ as we perform our capture burn around the moon, which is really nice. It just so lined up that way. That's just the way it kind of played out, which is really cool. And I don't think that really saves on any Delta V or anything like that, but it's just it's just nice. There we go. We are now bringing it slowly down to the surface. This thing is considerably heavier, like I just mentioned, than DNS. So it's a little bit harder to touch down, but obviously Armstrong has a very, very low gravity. So it's not all that hard to bring it down nicely. And there we go. Look at DNJ with Chimera in the background, it looks absolutely spectacular now. Like I said earlier on in the episode, I'm really pleased with how that is turning out. But 
we are only going to stop momentarily. Like I said, this is going to be a whistle stop tour at the base because we want to make sure that this thing is fully functional before sending crew over. So we are going to make our way into orbit of Armstrong yet again, and we are going to fire up those engines and make our way back over to road. This is going to work exactly the same as DNS does. We are going to make our way into a nice low road orbit before we start our descent. That way, well, the re-entry effects aren't going to be as harsh as if we were coming straight back from an Armstrong encounter. There we go, we have made our way down. The air brakes have deployed. And I did read a comment, apparently I'm using these the wrong way round. So <laughs> I only read them after I had designed this mission. I think I might try and rectify that and make them so that they wouldn't snap off because yeah, they, they don't look like they're particularly stable that way. The only reason why I have them this way round is it just kind of fits nicely to the shape of the spacecraft, but I'll see what I can do with future iterations of this craft. I do have a few edits that I do need to do. One of those being I do need to add a module that is capable of tethering this to the ground because unfortunately those legs do not provide that option. But anyway, we have safely brought this down to the surface. Thank you for watching this video. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.